All right, guys, we've been subject to a torrential downpour all morning, but it's starting to break. And what we're going to talk about is uh, be the change that you want to see in your dog. We got some nice people over to walk their little dog, Penny, and I'm going to show you how I make my clients walk in the rain. Because, like everybody always asks me, Stoney, how do you get the dogs to mind all the time? Well, you start by modeling the behavior you'd like to see out of the dog. So if you want to see your dog put in that work every day, then you need to get up and put in that work every day. Okay, so here we are in the rain, and uh, <laughs> Lindsay's over here. So I'm gonna walk her dog, and then we'll put her to walking. Penny, come here. Oh, and we'll train dogs while Lindsay is walking in the background. Now, if you're wondering what this is, <laughs> This is what happens when you have a dog that you uh, don't get to early and you don't exercise them and you don't train them. So you're periodically going to see this lab named Ammo run in and out of the screen, knocking into everything and just generally causing mayhem in my video, right? Just goes to show you, they don't all show up here <laughs> minding. Some of them show up here <laughs> the farthest thing from minded. Hey, Penny, come here. Let's show them what somebody... Now, uh, this brings up a good point. Like look running around in the background, and now look right here. You see the effect that chocolate lab is having on this chocolate lab? So we're going to see if uh, this little dog here at 14 and a half weeks old can't model a little bit of behavior for ammo. But come on, Penny. Let's go ahead and get Penny started walking so we can get Lindsay started walking. And then I can go back to <clears throat> getting the stuff done that I have to get done. Very nice. So you guys are familiar with my general obedience exercises that we do every day, rain, snow, sun, shine, heat, whatever you got, you know, wait, we're gonna get out here and put that work in. And then what that does is that makes the dog understand there are no, ex there, there are no circumstances where the work doesn't have to take place before the fun. Now you'll see running around here behind me, ammo. <laughs> now ammo thinks that the fun time is all the time, right? It's ammo time from daylight to daybreak. Wait, easy. But the one thing I know about ammo is he's gonna calm down here in a minute because uh, I don't think his owner has exercised him enough to put him in the physical shape that he's needed to spaz out like this all morning. Wait, easy. All right, now I'm gonna come around here, work on my stay. Then I'm gonna hand this leash right back off to Lindsay and she can just get to working. Very nice, very nice. Sit, now notice how Penny is concentrating even though ammo is spazzing out here in the background. That's what we need. We need our dogs to understand that the work gets put in no matter what. And so look at these guys. These guys are good students. Ammo is that nose picker that sits in the back, <laughs> you know? Okay, all right, Lindsay. So you're familiar with what we're doing here. So what are you gonna do? What, what's the vocabulary you're gonna use? No, come, let's go, hup, easy, wait, stay. Okay. Oh my gosh. I, I, You're not a nose picker, are you? No. Are you a nose picker? Do you sit in the back of the class? Come on now, you get started over here. Come right around here, get to walking up this way. Let's get us a little hup going on. Okay. Now really talk it up to the dog. There you go, hup. And uh, don't use her leash like a steering wheel. Talk to her, use your vocal inflection and your posture to let her know where you're going. There you go, easy. Follow her around there, Eli. Very, there you go. Put some slack in that lead. You guys are doing this together. You're not doing it to her, you know. Now see how you ended up with that tension on the leash and you ended up with her on the wrong side? Okay, so that's going to happen until you've done this five or six times in a row. So talk to her. Tell her what you're doing next. Hup, hup. Now see how you turned, you went to her right side? You keep her on the left side all the time so that she knows what to expect. And that's kind of what this video is about, is the dogs need to know what to expect. They need to know that every day, right, you're going to get up and the work that you're going to put in is the same basic work. They're supposed to be calm, attentive, and polite. And by being calm, attentive, and polite, you can more fully integrate the dogs into your lifestyle. The more fully that you integrate the dogs into your lifestyle, then the better they understand what's expected of them and the more fun they are to take places. Well, the more fun they are to take places, the more adventures you can do, the more fun the dog gets to do. So it's a cycle. If a dog will behave better, then you'll do a little bit more with it. If the dog, uh, if you do a little bit more with it, then the dog will behave better, you know? Like when you first brought Penny here, she would get so excited and bark and pull on the leash and stuff that like sometimes, you know, if you, if you had a lot of people out talking and stuff, it was hard to keep her out. 
But now, like everybody loves her. I've let uh, probably 50 kids walk that dog and all of them like her. And she can be out around all these young families that come because she's calm and polite. Now she still has a little barking here and there. She still jumps up a little bit here and there, but it's getting to be less and less every single day. And that's all we're really trying to do. We're trying to get, you know, we're trying to base our program on incremental progress, you know. So now when we think about incremental progress for the dog, we're thinking about incremental progress for the handler. Look how much better you're doing this just on your second turn around. Just the second time around and you basically you know, went from doing it where you were giving her uh, non-concise, non-clear communication, right? To now you're being clear, you're setting the emotional tone and look at the high level of compliance that you're getting out of your dog even though you're in a super highly distracting environment. Very nice, perfect. That's perfect, couldn't be better. Up, up, very nice, easy. Wait. There you go. Now easy, perfect. Hey Beth. There you go. Now let's try to cut those ant ants out by telling her what we want up front. You wanna save your ant ants for the day that the dog's running into the road or fighting with a bear. Easy. Very nice. Hup. Very nice. Hup. Very nice. Now, just like a horse, you want to give her a good bit of information on the way to your next uh, obstacle. So as you're coming off the last obstacle, tell her, hey, we've got something coming up. Look for it and figure out how you're going to negotiate it. So let's go. There you go. And now, hup, hup. Very nice. Talk her up, good dog, good dog, good dog, hup, hup. Tell her what you're doing next. Very nice. Perfect. Now easy. Talk to her, nice, good dog. Fine animal. Very nice. Talk her up a little bit there, Lindsay, tell her. Because this is boring to her. All these other dogs are running around. You've got to make it, you know, you got to, it's not going to be as interesting as play, of course, but you want to make it as interesting as something that's compulsory can be. And then what happens is like, now go back and do it again, right? And now be aware of where your body is in relation to the other dog, or to your, to, to your dog. Hup, 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 very nice, easy, wait. And you see how those other dogs sprinting by, that, that's what causes her to have a hard time concentrating. Easy, hup, hup, very nice, and we're just, we do this over and over and over again until the dogs understand that the way they get to engage in the crazy activity that the other dogs are doing is by being calm, attentive, and polite and doing their work well. Easy. Very nice. Hup, hup. Perfect. Perfect. Very nice. Good. Very nice. Easy. Good. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go around one more time. We're gonna try to get it perfect this time. So you're gonna give her clear and concise uh, instructions, and you're gonna give them early. And you're gonna really talk her up and set the emotional tone for each part of the activity. There you go. Up, up, up. Very nice. Very nice. Up, up. Up, up. Very nice, very nice. Up, 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 up. Very nice. Good. Now you'll notice that it doesn't look, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't look bad when you do it, but it doesn't look as seamless as when I do it for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm a lot more clear when I'm talking. Number two, I kind of act a lot more fun. And then number three, I pay better than you. <laughs> You've done a whole lot of working and there's been like zero paychecks, right? So she's like, wait a minute, Stoney's usually got some good, uh, at least a little dog crack or something around here. <laughs> wait. Very nice.
Very nice. <laughs> uh. Now, see, that's what we're talking about. That's the kind of stuff that happens in real life. You're out, dogs get in your space, dogs get in your way. You know, dogs might be working against you. You know, you're out just trying to have a good walk. That doesn't mean every dog's gonna, gonna buy into it. There you go. Okay, now, take her over there and put her on that table and tell her to stay. Good. Give her that Darth Vader hand. There you go. Okay. Now, all right. So I'll, let me take her. I'm going to walk her one more time. And that was that was really great. That was awesome. Okay. Let me show you a couple things that you could do that would make it a little easier. Number one, you could be a little bit more like effusive with your talking. Come on, come on. Oh, it's a good dog. Oh my gosh, you are a very nice dog. Now you see how that immediately picked her like her attitude up a little bit. Okay. And then what you'll notice too is that I pay better. Right? I don't mind paying them a little bit extra. Oh my gosh, you're a smarty. Hup, hup. Oh, that's a very nice dog. Wait. See, so that's a pause point. I'll usually give them a little treat on the pause point. Easy. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're such a good dog, Penny. Hup, hup, hup. Oh my gosh. Now you see, when I'm ta I talk them up, I model the behavior I want to see out of them. So when I want them to be calm and quiet and not putting forth a lot of physical effort, then I'm calm and quiet and not being very physical or vocal. When I want them to be really physical, you know, I want to put a lot of effort, a lot of attitude, then I put out a lot of attitude. You see? You see how she's walking with her head more up, up, up? Oh my gosh, very easy. Now wait. Now see how I calm down there? I model each segment of this behavior that I want. Easy. Very nice. Up, up, up. Oh my gosh, and if you do it right, oh, uh, look at this. It's a mini Bernadoodle. It's pretty awesome. Oh, uh, if you, I'm doodled out. Look, I got a mini Bernadoodle. I got a Golden Doodle. I got a Labradoodle. But I'm gonna do it one more time so you can see. Oh my gosh, Penny, you're such a good dog. Hup. Oh, you're a very nice dog. Hup. Oh my gosh, you're a very nice dog. Oh man, watch out. Oh, now see how by, by, me, my, by me being more outgoing, how I draw all the dogs to me, Oh my gosh, up. Oh, George, a good dog. Now, wait. See, I, I changed. I went from way up here to way down here. You know, easy. So I model each section. I'm thinking about what I'm going to model for the next obstacle. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, up, up, up. Very nice. Listen, wait. See, I brought it down. Good. Easy. Oh, these are fine animals here. Oh my gosh, watch out, Georgia. It's a doodle fest. Oh my gosh. I'm the doodle master. Oh, there's my baby, though. I like these labs. But I like. Wait. Easy. Oh. Now, it does, hey, listen, now, this, 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 these rules don't just apply to these doodles. Let me grab a different dog. Uh, let me see. Now, watch. I want her to stay, so I'm gonna be a little bit more serious here. Sit. Sit. Stay. And like she's kind of uh, she's a little bit on the on the prissy side, so she doesn't always want to put her bottom down, like if it's raining, you know what I'm saying? So you see how I had to model that. I was like, hey, now I'm serious. You see how I'm going, hey, we're having fun. Slow down. Now I'm real serious. Okay, so obviously I'm the doodle master. Let's see if that same principle works. With a terrier. So here's a Jack Russell Terrier, Stoli. Come on, Stoli. Yeah, I think it's going to work the same. Come on, come on, come on. Hup, hup, hup. Very nice. Now, Stoli is a very sensitive Jack Russell. Jack Russells used to be like really, really tough little dogs that you could count on for going and killing stuff. Now they've kind of turned into sensitive little dogs that people like to carry on airplanes and stuff. But they're still pretty good dogs. Hup, hup. Oh, very good, Stoli. Now, this is a pause point, so I can come in here, give them a little reward if I want. Now, here's how you know when you're doing your obedience right. Does that seem like something I forced on her? No. She wants a little treat, but she doesn't even really want the treat. She didn't even eat all her breakfast this morning. What does she want? She wants my approval. So that treat is a physical manifestation of my pleasure with that dog. She's competing against the other dogs. But now look, while I'm talking, do you see how I've lowered all my action all, and, and, and I've decreased my, the degree of my vocal inflection and my posture has gotten real still? Because what am I modeling right here? 
I'm modeling a nice calm behavior. Now when, I, when I'm ready for movement, how am I going to change? Get excited. Okay, Stoli, come on. Very nice. Oh my gosh, you're a very good dog. Come on, come on. Very nice. You're so smart, Stoli. Up, up, up. Very good. Wait. Now what you guys can't see on the camera is that Stoli's owner is over there mouth agape. Just can't believe how awesome Stoli is now. <laughs> oh my gosh, are you the smartest little dog in the world? Very nice. But see when I'm walking or see how like when I'm walking Stoli or your dog, wait, or look how good Han is. You see this right here? See, I'm not jerking and pulling all the time. Listen, I'm not above. I, I wouldn't have the leash on the dog if I didn't need it sometimes okay but i need a seat belt in the car i'm not looking to use it any more often than i have to right so don't be uh don't 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 be thinking that you need to be pulling on this leash all the time it's not a steering wheel you know it's not handlebars on a bicycle listen here doodle i just put you in my pocket very nice oh you watch that so it's, we'll do this one more time with stoli because everybody's knocking him off there okay come on stoli very nice oh it's a very good dog Oh, it's a very good dog. Very nice. Now, so, see the fact that it's raining, the fact that all these dogs are running around, these are all things that are hard for a terrier to deal with because they have such a low threshold at which they get excited and want to chase. Wait, but Stoli's doing awesome. Penny's doing awesome. Han is doing awesome, you know. Oh my gosh, one more time, Stoli, we'll be done. Good. And we can apply these same principles to a broad variety of dogs that are going to do a broad variety of things as they get older. Like Stoli is going to be going to like uh, uh, nursing homes and uh, hospitals and hospice, that kind of stuff. You know, so we really work on him being calm and easy to control. So we've really went out of our way with that. Your dog, you didn't say anything about your dog doing that kind of specific stuff, but like, look, you know, it's the same foundation. Everything gets the same foundation. Hana, hey, come here, Hana. Hana's going to be a hunting dog, <coughs> but she's a house dog first. She's going to go hunting sometimes. She's going to be a house dog that goes hunting sometimes, right? And so I need basically the same foundation. I need her to come, to be still, to have good manners. I just need her to know a few more specific skills. That's why you'll see this boat's out here today. So, like, if, I, if I've got a dog and I know, oh, hey, somebody get me the wheelchair and stuff from out of there. So if I have a dog and I know that they're going to have a specific job later on, then what I do is I do my foundation work. And when I'm doing my foundation work, guys, I'm not just working on the dogs. This is, this is what the whole point of the video was today. You know, we, we were going to just make it in the rain. But the whole point of the video is, like, be the change that you want to see, right? Okay? So I want to be a happy, outgoing person, but I want to be a happy, outgoing person hup, hup, that is able to get the job done that needs to get done. Does, does that make sense? Right? So like, here's just a minor change that I threw in to what I was doing with the other two dogs. Right? And I got just a little bit serious because this is a little harder than the rest of those obstacles because Hanna's overall lifetime job is going to be a little harder than Stoli's job or a little harder than Penny's job. But did she miss a beat? No. Only thing that happened is as I was coming down through those obstacles where I would normally be, hey, 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 because they're so easy, I changed my vocal inflection a little bit and I was like, hup, hup, we got to get in the boat. Okay. That's it. Right. So um, <clears throat> we're going to We'll wrap this up right here. We might come back and visit a few more dog walkings, but uh, uh, th that's what I was trying to do for the day. I hope it helped you guys out there, and I know it helped Lindsay because I can see a big giant smile on her face. <laughs> All right, see y'all later.